Okay, but the tension seems to still be generally hogged up by NVIDIA. Maybe that'll shift with Apple at the records, Jeff, but right now the commentary is busy on the semiconductors. Yeah, I think the focus continues to be on the semiconductors, on NVIDIA in particular, and you know, we're continuing to see analysts weigh in post the split here. Argus raised the firm's price target to 150 from 110, kept a buy rating on the shares. They said following a highly successful 2024, NVIDIA is positioned for continued momentum in 2025, and shares have much further to go. The firm also says that uh, they're looking for growth beyond data center and AI as the company's other end markets, including the gaming, professional visual visualization, and automotive also accelerate. We also saw a note out of Oppenheimer who reiterated and outperformed, moved them to $150 for $110, said that they see NVIDIA as the best positioned in AI, benefiting from their full stack of AI hardware, networking, and software solutions. The analysts also raised their 2024 full-year earnings estimates to $2.62 and their 2025 estimates to $3.32 following the split. They said that they see several structural tailwinds driving the sustained outsized top line growth in high performing gaming, data center AI, and autonomous driving. So obviously we've you know watched the stock hit the market cap three trillion. We saw that last earnings report where revenue was up 262%, data center revenue uh, you know grew uh, 427% uh, coming in at 86% of their total revenue. And even gaming was on the rise up 18%. So the, the numbers have come in uh, really well for NVIDIA. They continue to do so. And analyst investors alike continue to seem uh, pretty optimistic about this AI boom. All right. Uh, as we just heard from our guest earlier this morning, Robert Cantwell, looking at Oracle this afternoon to get an update on another hyperscaler uh, competitor to see how much they're buying says uh, if there's a big CapEx number there, it could be good for NVIDIA. I thought that was pretty interesting. I think that's probably fair and true. Uh, they're trying to buy the dip a little bit here. It wasn't much of a dip this morning, NVIDIA, but anytime there is anything, it usually gets scooped up like it did yesterday. So price target's moving higher. Don't imagine that's going to scare anybody off. AMD still down, though, Jeff. You think that's because people don't need it as a cheaper proxy anymore? Or is that just because no one's showing AMD as much love on the analyst side? I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's, it's you know, there isn't as much love being shown to a AMD. I mean, NVIDIA is clearly uh, a market leader here, especially on the AI side, controlling, you know, roughly 90% of that market. And the fact is, NVIDIA's second largest market platform, which accounts for about 10% of their revenue, is gaming, right? Uh, and, and the company, uh, you know, expectations are fairly high. We heard from the analysts, but also from others that, you know, uh, the graphic cards for computer gaming are going to continue to rise. We've heard a lot about PCs. Uh, you know, kind of coming back in the second half of the year and beyond, I think that the gaming side could certainly add more revenue. And that's an area where they're going to be competing with, you know, companies like AMD. And now challenges are certainly that AMD and Intel and other names are, you know, growing competition. There's also some issues in China. There's these high expectations around AI chips. Those are all, you know, potential challenges for a company like NVIDIA. But at the same time, when you've got their data center growing, you know, 200 plus percent year over year in these quarters, um, and the, the supply continues to re remain kind of constrained, I, I think that's a real positive. And you know, the fact is, their H100 chips, they almost can't, you know, they're they're selling so many, and they can't make enough for what everyone wants. Now they've got the Blackwell chips coming out, which I think investors are pretty excited to see what sort of numbers we're going to see come out of those. All right. Uh, good uh, analysis of the analysis. Thank you, Jeff Pierce.